nuclear power. Yes. And the uh, people that were against nuclear power were people like Bruce Springsteen and Jackson Brown. And guitar and players. <laughs> ludicrous. And I was getting my scientific information from people who played guitar. So it was a real change for me. Now you started out thinking about, as you said, nuclear This was a weighty and even messy undertaking for two guys. And I wondered how soon we'd complete it, how we'd have to enlist the help of others, and what it would cost. Ray had been pondering the idea of a documentary film on Shoreham, but was uncomfortable being on camera and preferred to work behind the scenes. I had been a reporter off and on for a number of years, was between jobs at the time, and was looking for an opportunity to apply what I'd learned elsewhere besides a newspaper. Since neither of us were gainfully employed at the time, I figured, what the hell. Just the names that are popping up. Henry Akinpora, who was the Brigade of Tents supervisor, I believe. The Atomic Energy Commission, Isaac Asimov, was mentioned in here. Dr. Saylor, who passed away in 1998, worked as a physicist at Brookhaven National Lab. I do remember that he, um, he took a year of leave of absence for the lab in order to work for the citizens who ordered energy policy. The debate over the future of the Shore nuclear power plant has been joined by a group called Citizens for an Orderly Energy Policy, which recently brought a two-page ad in Newsday to make its case. It was signed by 62 scientists who live near Shoreham but do not work for LOCO or have any direct interest in the utility or the plant. He went to all the hearings, which were very, very, very um, unpleasant. And he always, I don't know if you want to include this, but not, he was always he came home very angry because a uh, um, lot of the people who opposed it were Lloyd Neck people who would have been neighbors, you know, and it was a NIMBY, it was a NIMBY policy. They uh, just didn't want it in their backyard, and they were very rich. We hope opponents of Shoreham will, care, will consider carefully the points made by 62 scientists and then reassess their position. What's your opinion you'd like to know? That a lot of the uh, women would bring their children to the hearings in little strollers, and Mothers encouraged the children to cry. <laughs> Anthony Feinberg has a folder here. Anthony Feinberg is a high energy physicist employed at the Cambridge National Laboratory. Uh, for the past few years, a clever campaign of lies, distortions, and misinformation has been aimed at the people of Suffolk County by the anti nuclear elite. In part, this campaign has been advanced with the best of intentions by citizens seriously concerned about possible danger of nuclear power. However, because of their concerns, they often have not checked the truth of quote-unquote facts handed to them by less than scrupulous politicians and ideologues. As a result, falsehoods are now uncritically accepted as gospel truth by a significant number of our fellow citizens. Now that we are approaching a final series of decisions about the Shoreham plant, it is vital that as many people as possible be exposed to the truth so that the decisions about to be made will benefit all the community, not just special interest groups. To inform the public, we present here a selection of the principal anti-nuclear lies which have been spread locally, together with the truth behind each lie, the truth which the anti-nuclear establishment does not want you to know. Lie number one, nuclear power represents a unique and unacceptable risk to our community. Truth, nuclear power is far less dangerous from every point of view than oil power, which is currently the only source of electricity on Long Island. If we use nuclear power, we can turn off the equivalent of the amount of oil power. Under normal operations, the sulfate pollution alone from an oil plant the size of Shoreham would cause the premature deaths of an estimated 500 to 1,200 individuals over the 30 to 40 year lifetime of the plant. In the last eight months alone, two oil plants have had major explosions. In one case, December 1982, near Caracas, Venezuela. And dissenting journalists and politicians were branded as dangerous and threatened publicly by the president. Variously reported from 200 to 400 were incinerated and 1,000 were made homeless. The difference is that no nuclear accident of this magnitude has ever occurred, while for oil it has. This is also before Sh uh, Chernobyl and all that other stuff, but that's a whole different ball of wax. In 1987, local chairman William J. Catacasinos testified before a Senate subcommittee. much on TV, although I've never been a very great uh, TV watcher, uh, but I don't think there was a great deal of news about Shoreham on TV. Mm -hmm. It was mainly in the newspapers. Right. And uh, you, you worked, uh, so you were there during the time when uh, Mr. Pierce and Mr. Catacasios uh, were at power. Would you be able to tell us a little bit about uh, them and how they kind of came into the fold? 
Can I say no? And who else is it? Uh, Charles Pierce. Oh, Charles Pierce. Charles Pierce, I, I was very close to. He was a mentor of mine. He was uh, pretty much pushed me along in the corporation. Uh, very sincere guy. Felt very strongly. Had all the right motivations about Charm. He wanted to reduce the uh, dependence on foreign oil, diversify, uh, diversify our fuel sources, reduce costs to the consumer. That was his total motivation. And uh, save, the, save the company and uh, make the company survive. And um, he was just uh, caught up in something that it was, it was so large that there was no escape from, and he became a victim of it. But the strategy goes beyond national energy policy and jeopardizes national security. The nation obtains more than 16% of its electricity from nuclear power plants, and these plants save hundreds of millions of barrels of oil each year. Uh, Bill Katakasinos is a, a very wealthy man, an accomplished man, very, very successful uh, person, very shrewd, intelligent. Uh, person really came into the utility business not knowing anything about the utility business. Came in as a businessman to take it over. He was a member of the board of directors and assumed the leadership. The Shoreham plant alone will save seven to nine million barrels of oil each year. And New York State burns an inordinate amount of oil to produce electricity. Approximately 25 percent of the oil burned in the United States to produce electricity. And you and I know that increasing this country's dependence on oil threatens its national security. And to his credit, you gotta, you, you've got to say that he saved the company in the sense that he got the government to totally pay the bill uh, for the shore and plant and uh, for the benefit of the stockholders of the corporation. So you got to give him that, whether you like him as a person or you don't like him as a person, he did accomplish that. The refusal of local and state governments to cooperate in emergency plans undermines the financial stability of utilities and deprives the stockholders of the value of their investment, investments made in good faith. Carried to its logical conclusion, the actions of these governments would force a local utility to go bankrupt because power plants cost billions of dollars. The consequences of a bankruptcy of a major utility could seriously impair the economy of an entire region. Uh, his, his methods sometimes and uh, his uh, viewpoints uh, I, I didn't share, I didn't agree with, but you know, he was successful uh, from, from the ultimate measure uh, that you have for CEOs of corporations, contrast to some of the, the CEOs today. That, you know, you see our being bounced every day from some of these big financial companies, uh, and subprime mortgage issues and things like that. Mm -hmm. Our first interview was with Carl Grossman, a reporter who had worked for the former Long Island Press and had also written for other local publications as well, including the Long Island Advance. And that's, as a journalist, I find to be horrendous that the American public, the world public, has not been told about the dangers of nuclear power uh, adequately. So, and we spoke to a gentleman named uh, Carl Grossman, a reporter. Oh, uh, yes, he was anti-nuclear. Yes.